Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy Siskin. I'm the author of Playing Solo Jazz Piano, as well as the outstanding, the legendary Jazz Piano Fundamentals series. Two books, Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book One, the sequel, Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book Two. Um, if you've studied with me, if you've watched a lot of my videos, you might know that I think that accents are really important to a good jazz feel. The accents are what makes swing music pop at any tempo, whether I'm playing fast It's the accents that make it feel like this snare drum solo. Right? Or if we're playing at a slower medium tempo, it's putting the accents in the right places on the offbeats that make it really swing. Now, I want to focus on those slightly faster tempos. And I see a lot of students struggling to make these accents at faster tempos. Um, and so I want to talk about what notes we accent and then really crucially, physically, how we accent them. Um, and I'm gonna, for now, I might use a couple different examples, but I want to start with this example from the tune Ornithology, which I always, growing up, was told was by Charlie Parker, but I think is actually by Benny Harris or some combination of the two. Now, there's no rule about how and when to accent when we're playing at fast tempos. Um, we know that we can't accent all of the offbeats because it would just get crazy. Right. So it's not really practical to accent every offbeat. To me, we want the accents to be, I hate the word random, but we want them to be unpredictable. We want them like a snare drum solo. We want them to be irregular. We want them to be surprising. We want them to be varied. Um, and one key musical element to keep in mind, and the one that I want to focus on today, and it is just one, there's, there's many possible solutions, is your top and bottom notes. And the reason that I want to talk about these is actually physical, that as pianists, we have a good superpower to accent our top and bottom notes that we're going to talk about today, which is called rotation. So let's focus on the top notes here. This gives us kind of a fun accent pattern. Um, so one way to tell what the top or the bottom notes are is where you're playing with your pinky for the top notes or where you're playing with your thumb for the bottom notes. That's just one way to know, and that's going to come into our use of rotation and fingering. Um, now, this is also what we would call a compound melody, which a lot of bebop melodies are, right? And you can see that the accented notes happen, this is in G major, so this is in F sharp, they happen to go down chromatically, right? <laughs> So not only are we able to kind of use the ends, the edges of our hand really effectively, but we're also pointing out this kind of complex compound melody. Now it's a little bit harder here to tell what exactly would be the bottom notes of the phrase. Certainly we could accent the A flat and the G flat as well as maybe this uh, well, I'd probably go a little earlier, I'd accent this B-flat. And just to be clear, actually here, I'm not using my thumb. I'm cheating. I'm using my second finger to cross over. So that's one possible version. Now, you might ask, why am I not just accenting these ones? Because it's kind of lame to just put the accents right on the downbeat on B1. And they're also not the lowest notes. Right? The lowest notes here are the lower neighbors on the end of four. So it's both more musical
and um, it's also actually fulfilling that, that rule about accenting the top or the bottom notes. So that's one possible solution. I think there's many um, good solutions. I'm gonna show you one more example here. Um, I just need to pull it up. I'm gonna find my transcriptions. And I think I might have shown this um, on my channel before. So this is a Bud Powell solo. If you look at measure B, I just love this measure. It says so much about bebop in this one measure. So this is just a G major scale. Yeah, we're sticking with ornithology today. And fingering wise, Powell goes one, two, three, four, five, connecting note, one, two, three, four, five, connecting note, one, two, three, four, five, and then doubles back. So if you look at it, it looks really complex and rhythmically interesting, but here it's just one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So if we accent the top notes, this makes it really easy. We'll accent the A, the D, and the G, and it makes a really interesting kind of rhythm, right? Three, four. Or we could accent the bottom notes here. I'll highlight them in green. And then I'll also accent that very last one because it is the bottom note. You know, I think personally, my preference is accenting these top notes. Um, and top notes, right, we do tend to hear high pitches as more prominent just as a human. But there are some times when you are gonna wanna accent the thumb as well. Okay, so now we maybe have one idea of where we're accenting. I'm saying, again, it's not the definitive only idea, but this is a pretty good place to start. Um, now, physically, I see a lot of pianists struggle, and especially struggle with accenting the pinky, because as we know, the pinky is not one of our strongest fingers, right? It's often, you know, especially if it's playing right after the four, these two fingers tend to influence one another. They don't have a lot of independence. You can see my third finger is even moving as I try to move my four and five. Um, oftentimes, people have these flying pinkies that are really tense. It's been a problem in my life, I will freely admit. Um, I know one piano teacher who, like, when somebody's pinky goes up, says, oh, is it tea time? I love that. Um, now, so what we need to do to make this accent is rely less on that individual brute strength of the finger lifting and going up and down and rely much more on, I already gave it away uh, previously, rotation, right? So rotation is this doorknob turning element. And... It should not be very effortful. And notice we can get our pinky moving much faster through just a little bit of rotation with not that much effort than we can moving up and down even with a lot of effort. So it's this kind of whipping rotation that we want to use. Now, this is kind of a strange thing in terms of teaching and learning because to teach it, we show this really big motion. But in reality, you don't rotate, you know, all the way around. You're, it would be ridiculous. But in order to, like, master the motion, I do recommend really practicing rotating. So this lick is a great one to practice with. Watch my hand on the keyboard. I'm opening all the way up. Wouldn't do it while playing, but this is an exercise. So I'm turning my hand basically 360 degrees. Now, I would keep your finger for the point of this exercise really close to the key or exactly on the key. Because if you're used to playing through really individual finger motion, you're probably not gonna use as much rotation. So keep it, you can't tell I'm on the key. good sound there. So 
there's a kind of whipping that happens with the finger. So you can see it. I'm not putting forth any effort. This is not hard. I'm not going to get tired from doing this. Um, now, in reality, is it only rotation that makes the accent? No, you, you certainly can use a little bit of finger strength. And in fact, in my opinion, I don't have like scientific data on this. I would mix a little bit of attack from the finger with that kind of whipping rotation. And you can get these really aggressive accents as fast as you want. Right? And this way, even at these fast tempos, you can get um, accents without sacrificing speed and without getting tired. Now, we can also rotate the other way. So if I want to accent those bottom notes, I'm going to accent, I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to rotate to my right. Now, here, I can't, I'm not going to turn my hand all the way, right? It's kind of a less comfortable rotation. But you can see my thumb's kind of rolling over just a little bit on its side. Less comfortable for me. And again, what, as we're practicing it, we're over-exaggerating. But in reality, just a little bit of rotation goes a really, really long way to creating the sense of accents. So you could just hang out on your thumb. And again, it's going a little bit on its side here. It's really exaggerating. That one's kind of fun. I can really play those notes just using the rotation. Now let's go back to our uh, head of ornithology. So I've got to go back to lead sheets, ornithology chart. So I'm going to do the same sort of practice here. And I'm going to start with these top notes. to practice, try to open your palm all the way up to the ceiling. You're not going to be able to do it in time. such an important part of jazz piano technique, in my opinion. Uh, we could do the opposite. I don't have as much room to maneuver there. Before I go, let me just share the name of the people who are experts in rotation, because it would feel wrong to talk about this without talking about Dorothy Taubman, who, you know, is probably the biggest advocate for rotation in piano technique. Um, she uh, is a person that some people stand by for curing piano injuries. Um, I don't really have a strong opinion one way or another. Some of the things that she talks about seem a little extreme for me, but they seem to have worked for people, so great. And then her kind of successor um, is Edna Golonsky, and she still has the Golonsky Institute. And if you want to like really, really dive deep into the rotation, you, they have some videos that you can watch. To me, a little crazy, a little extreme, but they certainly have studied rotation more than anybody else. So I hope that this has helped. These accents are so key to having a mature piano sound. Uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, then, um, you know, say something about uh, Cantaloupe Island in the comments and buy all of my books, you know? Hey, I could use more money.
you know, you could see that my clothes are not, they're not the expensive ones that I really, really want. I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, take care, everybody.